If you want no generator in your camper, then you'll want to pay attention to this. We have no generator and no spot for a generator. However, if we did have a generator, we would remove it and we'd replace it with this little guy. This is a Renogy 50 amp DC to DC charger. And what it does is it allows you to change your truck into a generator. Now, most people know that your truck has an alternator that charges the truck battery. And what most people don't know is that the newer trucks, the alternators are quite robust. The alternator in the F-250 is a 240 amp alternator. Now that's a lot of charging power that you can use to help charge your camper battery. Now, a lot of people with older style batteries, the um, sealed acid batteries and the flooded acid batteries and the gel batteries and all that, is they will use um, just a cable straight back from the truck into their camper's battery. And sometimes they'll use an isolator or separator to turn on and off the connection. However, with lithium batteries especially, you wanna control that charge a lot more closely. And so a charger like this can do that for you. So this will basically limit the charging at 50 amps. So what that will do is allow the uh, truck alternator not to be overworked and cook itself. With lithium batteries, the truck alternator will do everything it can to produce enough power for those lithium batteries and realistically, uh, the lithium batteries will take as much power as the alternator can give. So it could well max out the alternator and, and uh, overheat it. So having a little better control, one of these chargers will go a long ways to doing that and allow you to basically, if you have a generator, get rid of it potentially. And if you don't have a generator, have that function of a generator by just using your truck. So one of these little chargers, there's a bunch of different ones out there. Um, we chose this one just because the size was a lot more compact and the weight was a lot less so it fit kind of where our small space allowed for it. And then we ran all the wiring from the lithium batteries to this guy. We have a breaker that separates it and then it runs outside the camper. So we're going to show you the whole setup and how it plugs in and whatnot. So if you wanted to get yours set up, you could do that. now. The biggest advantage with uh, being able to charge your batteries this way, even if you have a big solar setup, you know, we have 800 watts of solar, but realistically, if you're gonna camp year round in different types of weather, you're gonna run into days where you're either parked in under trees or in the city, or uh, the sun's just not coming up, or you're covered in snow on your roof and you're just not getting any sort of charge. And it's really uh, depressing to realize that your batteries are almost dead and it's the only way you can plug it is to plug it in, you know, somewhere at shore power. So with this type of setup, we can just run the truck and recharge the batteries. So with our camper, we have two 100 amp hour batteries. So if they were completely dead, we would be able to recharge them just off this 50 amp uh, DC charger in only four hours. And that's if they're completely dead and we had no solar power coming in. But realistically, is they would probably not be completely dead and we'd probably be getting some level of solar power as well. And for just normal travel, this thing's gonna seriously boost the a battery's ability to recoup a lot faster. So let's take a look at and see how this is all connected. So what we have here is the charge uh, DC charger and it runs uh, to this breaker. And this just allows us to disconnect from the camper, the, the power connection to the truck. Now, if we follow that cable outside the camper, we're gonna see the connection we have that runs to the truck. So this is just an Anderson style connector and it allows you to plug in uh, kind of a, a robust uh, watertight style connector um, from one you know, vehicle or camper to another. So in this case, we're using it from the camper to the truck, but a lot of people use this for extensions, for uh, winches or for jumper cables and whatnot. But you can see it just runs out of the camper here and it's just sitting here. So once we um, have it loaded on the truck, we'll be plugging in. So let's take a look and see how it's plugged in or set up on the truck. Back of the truck here, we have the Anderson connector. 
and I just have enough length on it so it sits inside the bumper in the back here when it's not in use. And then it has, it's long enough where it will be able to reach the camper once the camper is loaded. And you can see it has a cover for it. And the two cables we ran are excessive as far as the gauge. So you'll want to look and, and do a wire uh, calculator to see how large of a gauge of wire you need to run depending on how long the run is and how much load you're going to be putting on it. Uh, in this case, we went way overboard just in case we chose to want to use it for something additional down the road or you know, if we uh, wanted to use it for a different purpose or anything, you know, it would allow some flexibility. And we had a bunch of one gauge cable sitting around so figure out why not use it. So this is one gauge wiring and you'll notice the positive uh, wire, we wrapped the entire length of it in just some shielding. So that just helps it avoid being rubbed on stuff and, and uh, creating some fun sparks and whatnot. So one of the things you want to pay attention to is how you run this cable. So in our case, the battery is on the passenger side. So we ran it just straight down from the battery on the top of the frame and then to the back. And anywhere that could have a possibility of rubbing on something, we did is just wrapped the entire two cables with some large uh, rubber hose. So we just took a hose section and cut down the center of it and then wrapped around that wiring and zip tied onto it. So that, that way it just gives a little extra insulation. So this wiring is kind of tucked up as high as possible as we go up the truck. So most of it you can't really see, but if you look in the wheel well here, you'll see uh, the wiring just right here. And then it's tucked up as high as possible all the way going to the front of the truck. Now it's a pretty long cable run. It's over 20 feet of total length from the front to the back, especially since you have to go from the frame height up and kind of work your way into the battery um, area in the engine bay here. Now in the engine bay, we just ran the negative wire to the negative on the battery and the positive wire to the positive. Now, before we connect it to the battery though, we did put a fuse in it. So it's got a fusible link and this is just a 100 amp fuse. So it's a little bit um, over uh, the rating as far as what the charge controller will do, but it just gives it a little bit of protection. So if, if something were to short out with it, if it got in a, a rack or something like that, the fuse would blow instead of it causing a fire potentially where uh, the wiring just basically heated up and cooked stuff or start welding stuff to it. So that's kind of how the, the wiring is set up. It's definitely takes a little bit of, of uh, planning and just work to kind of get it all configured. But then once you're done, you kind of have a really nice way of recharging your truck or your camper batteries um, from you know the the uh, the truck here so it'll give you a lot of flexibility when you're out there in the field one of the things that was really frustrating to us with the four-wheel camper we had was they ran this tiny little wire from the engine bay to the camper and it may have been eight gauge ten gauge wire or something like that but the amount of charge that it provided off the truck was uh, pathetic so you could literally drive all day long and it may not charge the batteries to full. And it was really frustrating because if you're out in different places, we were down in Baja and it was barely getting enough sun because of it being winter time and the sun angle being low. And then that fridge is sucking down the power the whole time and you're trying to get it to charge off of the truck. It's not really doing that and there's not really anywhere to plug in. And it's just really frustrating to run out of power and have that be a focus at all when you're traveling. You want to more or less just have stuff work the essential parts so you can just enjoy being out and doing stuff. So I think this is going to be a really good um, setup, but it is new and so we'll keep you posted. We'll do an update review on it after we've run it for a while and give you some feedback for it. But um, from what I've seen, what I've researched, it seems to be a really good alternative to um, just running a cable to your camper um, because of it gives you that control of how it charges the batteries and it's certainly a lot better than having no generator or no way of recharging your batteries except for solar um, or you know shore power and uh, you know 
we try to avoid shore power. Solar power is awesome, but there are circumstances that you just can't get enough of it when you want it. So anyways, hope you found this educational and interesting. If you have any comments or questions about uh, any of this stuff as far as recharging your, your batteries and, and the potential of not having a generator, feel free to mention that below. I'll try to get back to you on the stuff that I've learned. And otherwise, hit subscribe, hit the like button if you want to encourage us uh, with these videos. We really appreciate it. Otherwise, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks so much.